Now the logical effort extends to multiple networks also. Before we actually calculate the net delay, let us calculate the path, okay, path delays. How do I calculate path delays is from this. Uh, this is a, I mean this example is not unique or something, it just to have a chain of four uh, gates. Initially the inverter is here and last is also an inverter. In between there is an XOR gate, uh, OR gate and an AND2 input OR and NAND and NOR gates. Okay. So I now start for path from here to here. Let us say C input has a unit of 10 okay, and C out has a unit of 20. Okay. So I say for this first gate G1 is inverter, so G1 is 1, H1. Now let us say this has an in size we do not know, actually what we are doing now, we want to find how, how much delay it will take for me to go from signal from this input to charge this output load and therefore to minimize what should be the sizes of these NAND NOR gates that is the capacitance they will give me which will optimize my delay for input, input to output. This is what I am looking for. So I first find the delay itself as a function. So I say fine, G1 is 1, the H1 that is the output capacitance divided by input, input capacity. Let us say it has a size of x, so it is x by 10. Similarly for G2, since it is a NOR gate, 2 input, 5 by 3. H2 which is y by x because this also I do not know so y by x so I H2 is y by x. For this let us say this size buffer also I do not know what it is to drive so I say it is a z it need not be minimum size it is a buffer stage so I do not know what is the size here so I say it is z. So G3 for NAND gate is 4 by 3 to input NAND gate is 4 by 3 and H3 is z by y and for the last uh, this gate G4 of course is 1 because an inverter H4 is 20 divided by Z output to input output to input ratio I had taken. So now I say the total excuse yes. me the last for the last buffer uh, why did you keep it as Z why could not you have taken it as 10 as what you have taken for the input stage? I do not know because I want to minimize if I had to increase the size I may. I need not have essentially the same final buffer okay. because many times uh, this is what we are doing the optimization of x, y, z sizing will give you the minimum delay. So if I fix z I have only two optimizing then so I will keep that as well as far as I, I am concerned I can put any size now I am at the design stage no one is fabricating any way right now so I can keep that as a variable as many variables you will keep that much control you have is not it. So that is the idea. You are right. If you reduce that fixed value, then you have only value, but that may not be minimum because for that value of z you have chosen that minimal. Okay. That may save your time a bit, I am not denying, but that time may not be that enough for offsetting the my actual delay reduction. So I keep it as a free flow. Yeah. So under the same assumption that output 20 could be because the load is no, fixed. No, but load is fixed. Yeah, load no. will be given to you. Correct, correct. The load, load is fixed. Load cannot be changed. But again that input 10 also could have Yeah, been normally fixed. input is also fixed. What we do is input is driven from the last gate somewhere from where and you will actually buffer. Like let us say I have an input A and I want to have A and A bar which I will show you later. I may create both complements and true. But that input circuit may not be able to drive the full lines. So I may actually put a buffer stage and normally some input buffers are used for drive the longer lengths. I may start with any value whichever is given by the last circuit to me okay, which right now I assume 10, 10 is not very some sacrosanct, 10 is a chosen number. You can put some other number and recalculate that number, it does not matter for me. Okay. The idea is given an input output and if there is delays in between the path what sizing I should do, okay. that is the idea. Okay. So I say path logical effort is the product of all logical effort along the path, okay, multiply of all g's. So g1, g2, g3, g4, okay. The path electrical effort is the output c divided by input c. However, I may now given sometimes this may work, sometimes it does not and therefore I wrote specifically this line. Do not define h as product of h1, h2, h3, h4. In this case it may work. 
in this case it is working z by x x by it will cancel and finally you will get only c out by c in. So, this worked very well. So, you thought h is also multiplied, but in real life we will show you an example which is called branching problems this may not be true. So, in general do not use product of h1, h2, h3, h4, hn to calculate your h. You only take the output and take the input, take the ratio of the two. In between we will see what h actually went through. Maybe it may still follow h1, h2, h3, h4, but that is logically it will automatically come. If it does not I am not bothered then. If I define by like this then I will be bothered. So, normally I never define h the total uh, electrical effort by stage wise I say output by input in block I want to. But in this specific case if you do that nothing well will go wrong because it will find that you can see c out by z the next is z by y so z cancel next is y by x so y cancel x by 10 so x cancel so finally you will get c out by c in. In this specific case it was true but an example may be shown where this may not be true. So, as a general rule I will suggest not to put h1, h2, h3 as this as the product to get your h. However, as I say in this specific case it was okay. Then the path effort I defined, path effort is from input to output I say defined as g into h that is what we defined to start with. Okay. So, the path effort is called f capital F which is okay, small f is called g into h small f is called stage effort each stage has an effort which is g into h. So, you can have now g h into g h into g h g 1 h 1 g 2 h 2 g 3 h 3 and n of them. Okay. So, we say it is product of all f's each stage effort. So, the definition is can we write therefore always f equal to g h yeah. I mean, that is what the whole question was ok let us see why <laughs> ok maybe this is not a good example. At times yes, at times no. If the parasitic delays are too small, maybe this is not absurd. But if the parasitic delays are not this because each block may not have same parasitic delays. In your calculation of this you actually forgot about p, so never put always, but in many cases it may. Okay. So, that is the, as I said these are back of calculation. So, you do not think that I want 2.367 nanosecond, I am not interested. It is 2.5 nanosecond lower or more. Okay. So, as long as these values I get I am as I say I am going to finally do final simulations, but I want to know initial guesses which should be close to what real values will give me for the minimum delay. Okay. This is the trick. Okay. So, we can now compute the delay of multi stage network by we say the path effort delay is sigma of f i path parasitic delay is all p summed together and the path delay is d f plus p now that p has to be there. Now, uh, maybe uh, we can see if I have n stage of such blocks n of them. Okay. So, what is the uh, f 1 f 2 will be g 1 h 1, g 2 h 2, g 3 h 3, g 4 h 4, g 5 product of all of them. That I call let us say I would like to get uh, some relationship I know h is h 1 what is h 1 c out by c in at that stage h 2 is correspondingly. So, if I now say I want to optimize the delay. So, what I am going to say that as long as each stage delay is equal I will get optimal delay. So, what I am really going to do is I want to find d by h 1 I want to find the net delay with reference to say first electrical effort and I can also say h 1 into h 2 is h okay. assuming right now no branching going on. So, any product of h 1 and h let us say only two stage things I am using. So, h 1 into h 2 is h. So, I can say h 2 is h upon h 1. Okay. Then I say for first thing it is g 1 h 1 plus p 1 or let us say same the other will be g 2 h 2 plus p 2 with the net delay d. One question sir. Yes. So, you said that uh, this thing uh, 
if you keep that H1 uh, more or less same throughout each of the states? I never said H. I said GH. Oh, GH, okay. I never said H. Okay. That is what I want to prove this point. Okay. So, I know now this D. Okay. I know this D. H of course, I know because I know C out to C in ratio. So, H is known to me. So, I replace this H2 by G2 H upon H1 and right now for the simplicity I assume both them same P, but you can always use others. This is the net delay, path delay from one to the other and then I, dif I differentiate this D with reference to one stage effort, electrical effort and equate it to and if I equate it to 0, I then can get the value of H1. Okay. That H1 if I substitute here, I get the value of H2. Since I know the two capacitance, I know in between capacitances also by this technique. But when I do this, I get an assumption that G1 H1 is equal to G2 H2. When I read DD by GH1 equal to 0, the condition I am getting to satisfy this is G1 H1 is G2 H2. So, each stage delay if it is identical then I will get always minimum delays. Okay. This assumption again is P is same if not there is another calculation but can be done. Okay. The idea is this. If I use this kind of logic which I have not shown here then I can say for any stage f, uh, any stage delay f g into h is called one single stage delay f and since there are n stages, so if I f is equal to g h, g i is a i th one not g 1 h 1, but i th one. So, for each stage bears a delay and remember f is the g 1 h 1 just n times that. If g and h are same then g h to the power n, g h is f. So, f in I must tell you what I am saying E g h is f. So, g h to the power n is actual f. Okay, if there is an equal delay of n stages g h into g h into g h which is g h to the power n is the net f or g h is f to the power 1 by n. Okay. So, we say upper. Okay. So, we say per stage delay is f to the power 1 by n if n stages are being used. Okay. Therefore, the net minimum delay is if there is n stages, this is per stage. So, f to the power 1 by n is for one stage. If there are n stages, n into f to the power 1 by n is this plus the net parasitic delay which is p 1, p 2, p 3 sum of all of them. Okay. This is a key result of logical effort. Is that clear? This is the key result because what we are now said if there are n stages and as long as you maintain G s same for most of them, then the delay can be minimal, any number of stages. Okay. That is exactly the trick. So, obviously, if you are using NAND gate and NOR gate, their G's are different. So, their capacitance should be so adjusted such that stage delay is uniform. That is exactly what designers do actually. Once I know C in what is H? C out just now, okay, maybe. H is C out by C in, okay. But I also know H2 and H1 are the ratio of C out by last one and next one by this. So, if I do this simple calculations or we can say g h is equal to f as we did. We can say input capacitance at any node i is equal to output of that into g by f. This is h, g h is what we are calculated. Okay. So, this now you have got, we know g of a gate, we know stage effort for n stages we which we have calculated already from n f n to the power 1 plus p, we already evaluated f for minimal delay. So, I know my f, I know my gate which I am looking for. If I know my capacitance at that output side, I can calculate the capacitance for the other side. Once I get the last input, I use that as an output for the next 
So, you start from the output side, keep going towards the input side and keep evaluating the capacitances and therefore the size. Capacitance means it is into proportion to W. So, as much capacitance you get proportionately W's you can assign to those gates. Is that clear? This is essentially what all that we do in all our calculations. Okay. Here example, let us say input of an AND gate driving first stage is say an AND gate to input NAND is C and let us say I am also driving a load which is C okay. and many times people say why are you driving but it is okay in that example. Uh, I have in between two NAND gates which is this is final gate which is driving this is the circuit given arbitrarily chosen not very specific for anything. Now, I want to know this I know C, this output I know C, but I do not know what are the sizes here. Okay. So, I want to find for the delay which is minimal for this path, path is from here to here. I want to see what should be the size of here and what should be size here. So, I say okay, I calculate the net logical effort first for the total path. Okay. So, what is total gate uh, path G is G0, G1, G2. So, I multiply G0, G1, G2. This is all three are two input NAND gates. Each has a logical effort of 4 by 3. So, 4 by 3 into 4 by 3 into 4 by 3 which is uh, 64 by 9 uh, 27 which is 2.37. Okay. Or keep it 64 by 27 it may help because you have to do one third again. So, maybe you can use directly that. Branching effort, okay, there is some word which we have yet not introduced. Uh, for example, this input, let us say this output can also be driving some other block somewhere. Right now, this is driving only one, but let us say this is driven somewhere, output another one, then there is a branching effort. Why? Because not only this capacitance has to be charged, but the upper one also or n number of them could need to be charged. So, there is now how much is totally required and how much part of it I am actually going to give for this gate is called the branching effort. Right now no branching, so our B is 1. Okay. No path of loads and the electrical effort I repeat do not do H1, H2, but C, C out by C in, C by C which is 1. So, the minimum delay is achievable, F is GBH, total path delay is G into B into H, B of course is 1 in our case right now till I do otherwise. So, I substitute G equal to 2.37 B1 and H1 and since there are 3 stages N is 3, this is 3 stage circuit. So, 3 stages, so N is 3, so 1 by 3 into GBH to the power 1 by 3 N F to the power 1 by N plus 3, okay I did not say you, but inverter has a delay, 1 input inverter has parasitic of 1, 2 inputs will have 2, 3 inputs have 3 whatever number of inputs of your gate those many parasitics are used okay, by value of calculations as a this. So, since it is 2 input, so you have 2 p inverters and since there are 3 such gates 6 of that. So, I get uh, you can see why I did I say you keep it 64 by 27 then this one third will go immediately and therefore, you get total delay. Uh, minimum delay achievable for this path is 10 and multiplied by tau which is your absolute delay. Uh, so, now if I want to calculate the capacitances sorry here excuse me sir uh, yes uh, one doubt uh, I am quite uh, you know uh, uh, naive to chip fabrication but a question is based on here. So, this way what you achieve is you achieve you know uh, different capacitances for different you know transistors. So, essentially what you are trying to do is uh, maybe in the same logical path you are going to have you know transistors with different widths. So, from a fabrication point of view is it difficult, is it optimum? Not at all. As far as fab is concerned they are given you design rules as long as you do not violate any one of them it does not matter. Fab people are only interested the constraint which they are given you as a design for layouts which they call design rules as long as you do not violate any of their design rules for a given fab uh, whatever foundry you are using you are safe anyway designer need not worry. Okay. 
of course this statement should be taken a little pinch of salt for say anyone designing below 32 nanometer process but as of now here I do not think anyone is looking for 32 nanometers till 65 45 even rules are known well known 32 22 11 probably are not available so I do not know but as of now any design rule given by a fab people you should follow as that means if they say do not separate line less than that do not use any w or any which is less than the number which they specify but you need not you scale all of them correspondingly okay we are mostly looking for ratios okay so you can scale things for your ratio okay, okay. so i want to calculate now as i said c in here and c in here okay so i say fine I have f minimum which is a per stage delay gate for this dd by dh 1 equal to 0. I calculate dbh to the power 1 third f to the power 1 by n. So, I calculate same 4 by 3. Seen at the last gate should be equal to I just said g of that c out by c min. Okay. So, it is 4 by 3 this c whatever is given to you divided by f minimum which is 4 by 3 which turns out to be same c use this c for example this c now here and calculate by same logic in this case it will come same because you are using two input and same but if this gate is different then it may get a different value okay. so you got for the middle gate also c this way you can find the input capacitance and therefore the size here another example okay now i have this is a branching work Okay, here is a case of branch doing big now. I have one, I have a, a, this is a three stage circuit. Okay. Probably you must have done in a logical uh, an algebra somewhere or logical switching theory that the number of stages and the size will decide the delay. There also we talked about that. You know, whether you should use four input systems or use two two input systems, similar gains are actually well understood or taken care in this design. Okay, that is the trick. Okay. So, here is A input is coming from here, then it is connected to two, two input NANDs, only one is used here for this. I am calculating delay on this path, red one. Okay. Whereas, this node is also driving another NAND gate, this node is also driving two other NAND gates. Okay. For simplicity, right now, I mean, it is not that I cannot do other things. I am assuming that all loads are same for each of them. I also assume all three NAND gates also have same size okay, right now. In real life this, this, this number may not be same and this number. So, we may have to calculate different path lengths and different delays on that. But right now for simplicity for calculation purpose I assume that. So, now I want to find the minimum delay on this red path and for doing this I want to find the size of this size of this which will give me minimum delay. So, I say okay, I have calculate full logical effort for the path which is g okay. 4 by 3, 4 by 3, 4 by 3. So, same as 64 by 27, 2.37. Electrical effort 4.5 and right now I, I have not said it, but let us say initial input capacitance is 1. By the way, whenever not specified, you assume 1. Okay. If Cn is not specified, it is taken a unit capacitance. This is specifically written by book somewhere. If not specified, use 1. Okay. Okay, 4.5 by 1. So, H is 4.5. Branching effort. Branching effort is now you calculate the net branching effort. You can see here how much actual capacitance this C uh, first gate is driving of them. So, it is y plus y is the net capacitance whereas actually for yourself how, what is the capacitance you need only one y. So, the additional effort is y plus y divided by what actually you are wanting is by y. So, twice y plus y by 2 into x because that is the value uh, sorry 2 into naught. Similarly, from the other path for the this how much will be this it has a branching for this there are 3 now z plus z plus z, but you are only using 1 z. So, the ratio is 3 z by z which is 3. So, you have a 2 from here, 3 from here. So, the branching effort is 6. Okay. 
So, that capital H uh, B is now 6 in earlier cases we only use B as 1 no branch. So, the net path effort is G B H G is 4 by 3 4 by 3 4 by 3 H is 4.5 H B is 6. So, it is 64 1.5 here which will give me 4.5 load output driving at the minimum delay of okay delay of 18 sorry why I am changing okay. Of course, as I say this is still in the unit of absolute not absolute say relative and tau has to be used okay. So, now one can see if given a network okay two things I can do one of course, I can choose whether to use NAND gate nor gates. I can also change the number of driving gates and driven gates okay architecturally to get same logic. I have shown you XOR can be of different architectures each gate you can think substitute them here and keep calculating D for your path whichever among the two or three you get the minimal that is some way close to what real value will come start designing on that and you, are, you will hit the correct results okay that is the idea and uh, people say oh it is taking as much time two hours so we could have done more faster in computers. You do, but uh, you do not enjoy that, you know. At least I enjoy what I do, okay. that is the difference. Okay. Let us take another case. Let us say the driving is 8C, similar the first was C, now it is 8C. I redo calculations and I say now the minimum delay achievable, you can see now if the load increases, that was how much? This was 10 minimum achievable delay if the capacitance is same at the output was 10. If I do it now with the everything else same, but the load is 8, 8 times. So, your actual delay has not increased 8 times if you have gone through this minimum delay procedures. Okay. Please take it the why this game was played. The game was played because if the load changes drastically, it does not if you follow this logical effort technique you may get the value of C in such that the delay does not increase 8 times. If you are simple thinking would have been you have put extra load extra times because C dv by dt C increase 8 time would be R current is e proportionally should have increased by W. You do not have to if you follow the logical effort from 10 I have reached only 14. And that is the trick which logical effort people suggested that do not go by this number suddenly load increases. You need not worry that the low proportionately such high number of delay will come. You can still optimize that delay to a lower value that is what I did here again G1, G2, G3 find G there is no H here because H is 1 uh, sorry uh, no branching H of course is 8 now what was H there 1 now H is 8 recalculate GBH, find out the minimum delay from the formula n f to the power 1 by n plus p n number of whatever it is, find that it is only 14 compared to what it was earlier 10. So, that is why I keep saying do it because if you do it you have you are now looking at the actual numbers ok, okay that is what I said and recalculate what is that once you calculate D for stage effort of f you can calculate C out back calculations and get new C's. All that has done is I change the C values to get minimal delay which is not proportional. So, this is what I am saying. If the load is higher, the earlier stages should also get powerful. Okay. I want to drive. So, what I do normally all inverter people what they do? They always increase the next inverter by E times or 2 times. 1, 2, 4, 8. This is what all people normally follow buffer stages, but that is only for inverters. Inverter design was known much earlier 70s or 80s rather, but here is the case we are not sticking to inverter any logic or any architecture. Okay. I can still calculate the minimum delay out of it and then I will say okay, how much is here next is next is and I can go to the input side. You input you need not calculate because C out by C in you have taken one anyway. For your simplicity given example calculate actually for the first stage whether you get that C in. Logically it should you have chosen H C out by C in. You start calculating from back for the first stage also calculate and check for your own sake 
whether that scene appears, it will, okay. There is nothing big, big about, but just that. Another example, uh, here, uh, oh, I think it is similar, only thing is sizing is changed, okay. Maybe we will do that or this. If you have different gates, no worry, all that you have to do is put logical effort correspond to that kind of gate. For example, in a NOR gate, uh, logical effort is different from, uh, it is 5 by 3, NAND gate it is 4 by 3. So, the multiplication is now for this case is how much? This is 1, G1 or G0, this is 5 by 3, 4 by 3, 1. So, the new lo path logical effort is 5 by 3 into 4 by 3 which is 20 by 9. There is no branching, B is 1. Electrical effort is still say output is 20 and C in 10, so 2. Calculate capital F which is 40 by 9. F to the power 1 by n is your stage effort, F small f min which is 40 by 9 to the power 1 by 4. Now remember it is 4 now, 4 stages. So, you get 1.45. Once I know the stage effort, calculation of capacitance 1 by 1 is possible. G into C out by F min 1 into 20 1.45 14. Then use this as the capacitance here. Do calculations. I get new calculations of X, Y, Z. So, one question, sir. So, uh, uh, the previous example that you showed where you put the load as, you know, 8C and you work backwards and you found that, you know, subsequent stages should have 2C, 4C and all. So, if you are not gone through this way and uh, if you had kept like uh, the C in to be same, then what could have happened is the last driver would have had the transistor uh, logic much larger, very, very much large. Much larger. Okay. And then since it is much larger, it will slow it out because the last stage has to drive much larger load, last to last. Okay. So, it will not be able to give that much delay smaller delay. So, it will increase the delay much higher than what you would have thought. So, that will act as a bottleneck. bottleneck. So, that is why we say, okay, it is something like a Kadi Pelwan should not fight with a big Pelwan. So, Kadi Pelwan to 2 Kadi, 2 Kadi to 4 kind of thing, finally big to big, okay. That is the idea, okay. okay. Note that you never size the first gate, okay. That is what my suggestion to all. This gate size is assumed to be fixed as because we are using Taylor's theorem, Taylor start with unit 1. So, we always use that, uh, that can be any capacitance, but that is treated as unit 1, okay. Uh, if you are allowed to size this gate, you may find the algorithm may have, I mean proportionally has to change because that value has to be now taken care ahead. Right now, do not play any game on the first gate size, okay. This is my, this. Here is small another different disk. I have one logical simple block. I have one inverter driving a 4 input NAND which is loaded to 8 C capacitance. Input is 1. So, I had two possible options. I have one inverter driving this. This is a AND, and gate. So, I put a NAND gate followed by an inverter. Okay. Or instead of 4 inputs, I use 2 2 inputs followed by an OR gate which is logically they are same functions. So, I have now two options. Of course, these are representative, you can have many options in many real cases. So, if you do some switching algebra or logical uh, analysis, you may get more options than one, okay. So, we take two options and find the delay. So, the first option, I have a NAND gate followed by an inverter and I calculate G which is G0 is 1, G1 is 4 input, but it is a NAND gate which is 6 by 3, okay. Uh, 4 plus 2 N, you have to take N plus 2 by 3, N is 4, so 4 plus 2 by 3 into 1, so it, logical effort is 2, no branch 1, capital H is 8 by C, C1, 8, the path effort is GBH which is 2 into 1 into 8, 16, recalculate minimum delay from n f to the power 1 by n plus p. This is 3 into 16 to the power 1 third plus p inverter plus 4 times because 4, four inputs, 4 p in plus p in. So, total is 3 into 2.5 into 6, 13.5. 
if I use this. Okay. Now, logical effort is this path okay, G1, G2. So, 1 into 4 by 3 into 5 by 3, 20 by 9, no branch. H is C out by C in same as 8. Path effort is 160 by 9. N is 12.8, which earlier was 13.5, uh, is 12.8. This particular example did change it, but not very drastically. So, either is ok, but in some cases, if a larger gates appear, you will find this difference may be much larger, and therefore, you may say whichever is minimal, and that is why we keep saying never input larger input gates as far as possible. Okay. The 4 is the highest number of gate you should use. So, here is the catalog which of course, you can see later inverter has a number of inputs 1 and the logical effort is 1. Of course, inverter will not have more than one input that is why it is inverter. For NAND gates the formula is n plus 2 by 3 for a NOR gate it is 2 n plus 1 by 3. This is you can calculate from number of input and you can arrive at this function. For a multiplexer it is standard 2 for x star x nor it is 2 input x or 4, 3 input 12, 4 input 32. Then the parasitic delay I already said inverter is p in normally use 1, n input NAND n times p inverter, n input NOR n times p inverter, n way multiplexer is 2n because 2 paths so 2n and for 2 input x or it is 4n p inverter. So, we are done derived that expression there. Fork. Fork is if you have seen any uh, FPJ or any logical systems where you are using uh, inputs, most of the times you create true and complement input at one time. Okay. The idea there is that if I use A and put an inverter to create A bar, then A and A bar are not in the same synchroniz synchronization because there is a delay on an inverter. Okay. So, what you normally will like to do is to equate the two delays. So, we call it in our designs, we say non-inverting inverters or buffers are used to equalize the delay on the A part itself. So, that non-inverting inverter will have a delay same as inverting inverter and therefore, I can equalize the delay. So, here is that problem which is called fork problem. Fork means you have one this pass to two of them. Okay. So, input may be A and you are creating A A bar. Okay. So, here is a problem. Uh, this is a this is like a branching effort. Okay, you are actually branching one going to two. Okay, a common case of branching is generating true and complement from a signal. Such circuits are of course called forks. For example, in a multiplexer on XR circuit, I just shown you I may require from same D D bar X X bar Y Y bar kind of thing. So the lower one is called lower leg, upper one is called upper leg, and I want to see that the delay on the upper leg or higher leg and lower leg are same that is what ideally I want. So, you can see the way I did I have put a non-inverting buffer here and inverting buffer here both have same delays. So, delay at this and delay at this is same. So, how do we get this? A far consists of two strings of inverter that share a common input. So, you have a two inverters here and one inverter here this is non-inverting and this is inverting. But now, I must balance the delay in the upper path that is higher level leg, so that it is exactly same as lower leg because that is what I am looking for. There can be more than two requirement depends on the drive capability you are the load you are driving that means in a poly line is too long array is too long I may require a huge buffer, but instead of huge buffer we know buffer is broken into n parts. Okay. So, there will be more than one inverters there or one buffer there. So, you can see from here you can have 2 1 fork, 2 3 fork, 3 4 fork depends on the kind of fork, uh, requirement of the load. So, essentially a general fork will have a load here and here and there will be n stages here and n minus 1 or n plus 1 stages on the other side. The total capacitance at the input is the input capacitance here plus the input capacitance here. That is the net capacitance this CE needs. Okay, is that okay? Since 
net I am driving two, so I am having one and then I am branching on that. Okay. So, C n is C n A plus C n B. Okay. The total electrical effort is still whatever is C out which is C A plus C B divided by C n. No difference. Okay. Individual electric efforts can be found from here, here, this both path I can find H. They may be different. So, it is C A by C in A, C A by C B by C in B, the, that is H. Okay. Even if C A is equal to C B, let us say these capacitance are same, H A, H B still may not be same because to equalize the delay, these two capacitance will not have the same value. I repeat, even if these capacitances are same, to maintain the delay here and here same, these two capacitances will have a different value. Okay. Values, they may not be same. The net H is same, the load driving individual is also same, even then C in A will not be equal to C in B if delay equalization has to take place. Okay. That is exactly what this branching is all about or forking is all about. Okay. The idea is what I say I know C out a uh, C in is sum of C in I will only show one example and stop C in A here and C in B here. The first thing I assume since the total capacitance is sum of the two which is input I apportion one of them has a beta times that value beta is less than 1 and the other is 1 minus beta of the time okay. C in B into C, beta into C in is C in A and 1 minus beta into C in, C in is equal to C in B. Total is still C in A plus C in B, uh, same as C in. Okay. So, that is I assume now that part of the capacitance is above and part of the capacitance is below and that ratio I am calling as beta. Okay. Let us say the total capacitance I am driving is 200 for both okay. and input initially is 10 and I am using 2 to 1 for 2 below and or 2 upper and 1 lower either way. Now, I assume that C A and C B are equal 200 fine total capacitance is 100 on the upper branch 100 on the lower branch net is 200 uh, even that is simple case. So, we say the branch wise one of them input is beta times C in the other is 1 minus beta times C in. So, I calc and if I want the delay to be same what do I want delay to be same. So, I calculate for both stages the delay one has how many stages? two inverters. So, two stage the other is single stage. So, take on the right side this is the single stage GH because capacitance is 1 minus beta times C in. So, ratio of C out by C in is H. G is 1 in this all cases G is 1 because inverters are used the logical effort is 1. 1 I am not multiplying. This is essentially H okay, GH and no branching. So, B. So, this is G H plus P, okay. G is 1, so H plus P. Now, for the 2 fourth state, which is the circuit I am talking, this one, 2 1 here, okay. lower one I calculated, which is 1 stage. The second stage, if I do, now 2 n is 2, 100 by 10 beta to the power half plus 2 times, now it is 2, please take it, it was 1 inverter here, here, 2 inverters, so 2 pn. And they must be equal because that is what we are looking for equal delays. So, I can solve this equation which is slightly quadratic in nature not very simple uh, linear equation it is a non linear equation okay, it, to the power half is appearing beta to the power half. So, it will require some calculations numerically if you solve which I did of course, I have solved it by quadratic method only and I find the beta turns out to be 2.6. Uh, 0.258. So, do not take as I say all engineers keep telling here you know the other day someone said the leakage current is 0 0.2456 pico amps 2456 maybe a 78 also. Hoga. Now, can anyone measure ato amps or something or this you are talking. So, why talk numbers which have no relevance in real life ok. So, same way do not say 0 0.258 means I will use 0 0.258 use closest integer or closest decimal number which I use 0.26. Using this beta, I can calculate now delay. I substitute beta there in the upper this and I calculate the delay. 
which is equal for upper fork and lower fork. And then I know the beta is 10 beta, C n is way is 10 beta capacitance into beta, the other is 1 minus beta into C n. Okay. So, I calculate C in A as 10 times beta is 2.6, 10 times 1 minus beta is 7.4. So, I now calculated the size of upper uh, inverter first stage, second inverter on the lower leg and also I calculated the delay which is 4.5 units which is same for both legs that is what we did when you equate it you said it is equal and for that you calculate. So, please take it I told you example. Even if the loads are same, C A is equal to C B, C in A and C in B will not be same if you want equal delay. If they are different, you may have still have be very different because then you will actually have a different part delays. But even if they are equal, this issue will be very important. Okay. Uh, sir, so the reason why you took them to be unequal is to get the minimum delay. This is minimum delay. A minimum delay in both the paths. Yes. That formula is always valid g h plus whatever formula f to the power 1 by n that formula is always valid for minimum delay. It is not for minimum delay, it is for equal delay. No, no, no. You are equating the delay of n stages with n, n plus. No, no, but the formula I used is for minimum delay n f to the power 1 no, by n. So, the minimum delay should be equal. Equal. Yeah, no, no, no. His point is n need not, I mean that need not be minimum delay, but any circuit you are using you will prefer to have minimum delay anyway. Okay. So, that is one issue which is always true, but assuming whatever delay you have the minimum the at least you should have equal delay. Even if it is not minimal delay, the minimum requirement is the delay should be equal. No, my point was like if uh, I you know put beta equal to 0.5 and I try to do the adjustment in the you know in the subsequent stage. I can, but as I said, Tilo said the first stage ko hath mat lag. Yeah. Okay. So, never try. <laughs> okay. As I said, you can scale, scale down, scale up, but then you will have to do for all of them every time. So, the method is keep one constant. Okay. So, start from here. That value may be anything. Okay. So, it is easier. Okay. Similarly, if you do for 3 to fork instead of 2 1, I calculate beta turns out to be 0.513 and I calculate capacitance again for that. So, so I can do any number, there can be more than one fork, 1, 2, 3, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, any number you can calculate uh, the delays, equate the delays and find out how many stages you should go through. But again a question, I would prefer to keep it as uh, 2, 2, uh, 2 dash 1 only, now why would I? Yeah, I would, no, no, but if that delay, you take it if the that delay is lower than the other one path you must check, check you should not only calculate c1 c2 whatever it is but the net delay also you may find out that the 3 to 4 2 fork will give average delay lower than the 2 to 1 fork the sizing will be such in its length that it will be lower delay is that clear to you you want to minimize the delay on the path as well as see to it that you have equal delays Okay. So, you may require to do more than one, it is not necessarily. It will be better, okay. of course not every, that is what load you are seeing, at the end what loads you see, that will decide how many stages you will have to go through. Okay. So, H because it is deciding H on that, so you will have to calculate every time any number of stages. In fact, you will sign this goes like this then the other, so there is a inflex point where both are equal kind. So, you may have 2 to 1 or 3 to 4, uh, 2 to 3 will have same delay. Something below you should have only 2 to 1, something above you should have 3 to 4. Keep doing like this. This is the table I am talking. Somewhere at 9.6 set uh, electrical effort, both are same, but if the electrical effort is larger, then you must go to 3 to 2 delay, 3 to 2 4. If the electrical effort is far higher, let us say at 38.7, it is same, uh, use lower one, but if it is more than 38.7 is your actual disk, then go for higher size, because the H will decide how much delay you are tolerating. Okay. Uh, here is an example, instead of inverter, you may have gates, method is same, is that clear? So, it is not that method is restricting to only forks of inverters. Okay. Size the circuit from minimum delay. Dry network, 
buffer non critical path with minimum size gates estimate the total effort along each path verify the number of stages estimate the branching ratio how much b you have Compu this is not for this last part this is for total what i say compute the accurate delays in including parasitic effects adjust the second stage to minimize the net delay okay here is small catch before i quit all this time i say it's symmetric sizing is 2 is to 1 2 is to 1 you can have any sizing okay it's called asymmetric S need not be half, okay. S can be lower than half, more than that is P may be stronger, N may be weaker, N may be stronger, P may be weaker, this is possible, okay. And you can still do same analysis as I did here, S is that factor which is called the asymmetry factor, how much is symmetric to asymmetry I have. And I use like for example, on this simple gate, this is 1 by S, this is 1 upon 1 minus S, this is gamma gamma times that. And I recalculate, I can recalculate the logical effort for any asymmetric gates as I did. So, what is the insight in this logical effort? It allows to compare alternative circuit topologies, that is most important. Okay. Circuits are fastest when effort delay of each stage is same. Okay. One should select number of stages to make effort close to 4. Part delay is very insensitive to modest deviation, so do not go for 2.63. Small numbers have to change. Back on up because as I believe what Professor Sharma, this word I have picked up from him here in his every talk, maybe today also you must have back up envelope. So, I it stuck me so much in over the years. So, I started using myself back up envelope more than him, it seems. So, if I want to do something optimization at back up envelope calculation, this is the ideal way. Delay of well designed path, this formula I can derive, okay, but the logical effort of a gate increases as the number of input grows. This has to be understood is input grows, firstly p times that will also grow. So, first thing worry is how much input. So, try never use more than uh, 3 or 4 inputs. Complex gate you have seen as larger the complex inputs, larger is the delay. So, do not go more than 4 input in series any time, which will be worst case. 4 of course, is the highest allowed. Okay. Branch circuit should differ by not more than 1 gate between the 2. If 2, 1, 3, 2, 4, 3, always do that. Better to use 1, 2 or 2, 3 FOX instead of 0, 1 FOX. Okay. Choosing P to N channel ratios, yeah, square, sizing equal to square root of the ratio, which gives equal rise and fall delay. Beta should be close to 1. Okay, so, that equal rise and fall. Uh, typically, it is found the ratio P to N ratio of 1 and half works for most technologies, okay, most technology. This is not true for 65 down or 40, even 65, but okay. So, here is a block diagram. Uh, of course, you will see this is like uh, whatever I said, this is exactly what it shows in a computer flow chart kind of thing. The procedures you can use it from this. Start with function C in C out delay, select circuit family, static or whatever it is, sketch path, label each gate with logical effort, label wire lengths, layers, default minimum pitch, compute RC delays, wire RC delays, label nodes with lumped wires and then keep doing my logical effort when the blocks are available to you and minimum optimize it and come back and put the values back. Thank you very much.